Welcome to Physics Can Be Fun with me, Stephen Thomas. Today I'd like to talk about DC motors. And we're going to show you a homemade DC motor. Here we have it. Consists of two magnets in the form of speakers. It's got a matchbox with coil wound around it. It's got a skewer. These are the two brushes. Here is a little cordless um, drill or screwdriver battery. And we're going to connect up the current and watch our little motor go. How's that for, for neat? Now let's just show you how this in fact works. Well, the main part, which is our armature, is a matchbox. Here we've got a coil of wire with lots of different windings around it and then the one end of the coil comes here, there's a piece of wire and on the other side there's a piece of wire and those then form our contacts. This is our split ring in fact, a split ring. There's a bit of tape just to hold it all in place but there's our two ends of the wire and that together forms our commutator or our or our split ring. You can see that separated from that and that's what makes it a we could call it a very primitive um, split ring. And then we try to balance this as best as possible and it spins. And then all we do is we have our little magnets and together these two form this is the one side is south, the other side is north, and here we have a magnetic field between, and then it's all held in place with these baked bean tins. The only other bits of interest are these. These form our two brushes. So here are our two brushes. And they coiled into a little bit of a spring with um, some screws to hold it in place, and then these push onto the split ring and then the whole thing turns and you can see that we've bent this over a little bit just to stop the skewer from falling out and we've done the same on this side you can see it's bent over so the skewer goes in there and that is our DC motor so we have a source of direct current which is this battery and if we want to make our battery, our motor stronger, there's four things according to Faraday's rule that we can use to make it go faster. Well, obviously, if there are no coils, it's not going to go at all. So if we have more coils, our motor is going to be more powerful. Also, if we have a bigger area, like say we had two matchboxes, a bigger area in which the magnetic field can interact. And let's suppose we had bigger magnets. Then we've got a much bigger magnetic field and a bigger field would mean that our motor is more efficient and would be stronger. So we need big magnets and a big coil to make it go more, more powerfully. Also, if we had strong magnets, super strong magnets, then it is obviously going to go um, a lot better as well. And then I have to use a battery that can give a fair size current, and it's um, 12 volts, and it gives a fair size current, and if we need a fair size voltage to drive that current, and so obviously the amount of current we can deliver to the system also will determine how powerful our motor will be. And then just one last thing on the theory of how do DC motors work. Well, let's suppose we've got a south magnet, let's suppose we've got a north magnet, and let's suppose we have a coil of wire. In fact, we've got a number of coils of wire. And there is essentially a DC motor. So, we could say here, we put our brush here we put our other brush, here's our split ring, and as this turns, it touches 
the brushes, let's say this brush delivers positive, this brush delivers negative. So current flows from positive to negative. And so our brushes touch our split ring, which then goes through our commutator or our coil. So there is our um, basic motor setup. So if we now want to take our left hand and use Fleming's left hand motor rule to determine in which direction this will turn, will it turn clockwise or anti-clockwise? Well, we first of all know that our magnetic field goes from north to south. So we're going to point this forefinger in the direction of the field from north to south with our left hand. We're going to then put the second finger in the direction of the current, that's this finger, and then we're going to see if the current is going that way and the field's that way, the thrust is going to be upwards. So here's the direction of the thrust upwards. And so we see that using the left hand. Now the current goes around here. Our field is still from north to south, but now our current is coming in this direction out of the board, so our thrust will be downwards on this side. The thrust will be down on this side, and the thrust will be up. So our motor, in this case, if there's positive, there's negative, is going to turn in a clockwise direction. And like we said before, if we have a larger coil, strong, a bigger magnet, stronger magnets, more current, then we're going to get our motor to turn more. And that is the theory of DC motors.